All right, guys, welcome back to another Kev Cam Night class tonight. Um, tonight, I uh, have Tim Micah helping out with any questions or concerns that come along the way for you guys. Tim, are you with us? Good evening. Yep, good evening, everybody. And then, as well as having uh, our high tech uh, applications engineer with us as well, uh, Greg Payton. Good evening, everybody. All right, so I do see a couple new names in here. So unfortunately for the the people that have sat in here for all the night classes, you'll have to hear this again. But um, uh, we do all these night classes uh, free of charge for you guys. But um, in what we do is we use the GoToWebinar uh, software to present um, the training material to you guys. Um, this does put everybody in mute. Uh, so if you guys do have a question, there is a questions panel in the go to meeting area and you can go ahead and ask that question and uh tim will uh flag me and let me know what the question is and we'll get your questions answered right away um these night classes are completely laid back so don't feel like you have to wait your turn to ask a question or wait to get in a certain spot um ask ask away as these classes are solely just for you guys for uh training purposes um as well as that, um, if you do have an idea going forward, um, definitely send those over to me in an email. And let me just get my uh, chat pulled out. And I will put my email address in there for everyone. There you go. So there's my email address. If you guys do have an idea, uh, send those over and we'll get you guys some free solid cam swag as a thank you. Uh, for those that people that are watching this after um, up on YouTube, uh, my email address is below in the description as well for you guys. So, And then last thing, and we'll get the ball rolling here, is all the night classes are recorded for you guys. So if you guys go to YouTube and type in Solid Cam University or KevCam, or KevCam Night School, it should pop up uh, with the channel. Uh, make sure you hit the uh, subscribe button so you can see all the latest videos. Uh, both Greg and I kind of got off track a little bit. We're doing a lot of IMTS stuff and vacations and traveling and all that stuff. So we usually do a, uh, Greg and I do a, a tip of the day for you guys. Um, they haven't been almost every day lately, but uh, we, uh, we'll, we'll get that ball rolling uh, once things uh, settle down again for you guys. So come check it out. There's a lot of great training materials here. Um, if you're looking for something specific, uh, definitely just hit the search button inside of the channel and that will, uh, and uh, just type what you're looking for or uh, either let myself know or Greg know and we'll get you pointed in the right direction as well. Or, or uh, Mark uh, Pemintel if you guys have his email address because he does uh, some of these videos as well. So, all right. I'm done with my spiel. So let's get the ball rolling tonight. Um, tonight we are going to be covering custom form tools and how to apply those and how to get these from absolute start to finish um, of creating that custom form tool to applying it to the tool path to getting finished product out for you guys as well. I'm kind of waiting for a couple more people to pop in here because this was a, a big uh, topic that a lot of people wanted to see. So, um, but so first things first, uh, what we'll start off with here is hey Kevin, Kevin, yeah. can I, if I can interrupt, are you yeah. broadcasting your screen yet? Ah, <laughs> that's more better. Sorry about that, guys. Here I'm showing you like uh, the YouTube and clicking on search and all that stuff and uh, you guys didn't even see any of it. But okay, so here's what I the thought, uh, I thought maybe it was me, but uh, Greg Greg pointed out for me. So go ahead. Yep. <laughs> here's what the uh, Solid Cam University channel looks like for the the guys that are new in here as well. So like I said, you should see the Solid Cam University and then the search button I was telling you about is right here. So you can just type that in there. But like I said, if you guys are looking for something specific, can't find it let us know uh, we're here to help out in any way possible. Okay, so creating a custom form tool. And what I mean by creating a custom form tool is, let's go ahead and open up uh, the tool library here. We have a lot of different tools that come with the software. But as we all know, um, there's always that chance that we need that custom tool or custom form tool 
or as simple as just a radius tool. Um, now, Greg, they did um, with mention something with the new library having those in there. Um, would you be able to say anything on that right now? Maybe not. Yeah, they're going to um, be bringing a new tool table to Solid Cam in uh, future versions. Um, that's going to expand the profiles that are currently available. Um, but until that point, uh, we're going to have to use shape tools to define any um, custom shapes that you don't see in this little uh, dialog box here that's on Kevin's screen. Yeah, and you know this is all off of um, of you guys as well as request, um, and it has been a huge request. Um, there must be some more fine tune detail that goes into, let's say, a radius cutter, because um, uh, I think Ronnie and some of the other guys were wanting barrel tools, and they actually added that barrel tool in there um, for 2018. So those are now in there, but for the custom tools. Um, they are, we, we just have to get those drawn in there. Now, <clears throat> there is several different ways we can go about creating a custom form tool. Um, I'm gonna show you all the different ways that you can, and you guys can decide which is the easiest, um, workflow wise, um, maybe you got a print from your tooling manufacturer, on let's say a really custom tool. So we'll kind of go through all the different stages for you guys. Um, and then, like I said, feel free to ask any questions along the way. So first thing I'm gonna do is go to solid cam, go to tool library, and we are gonna go to shape tools. Now what this is gonna do is bring up a dialog of all the different um, custom shape tools. And you'll have a couple default ones in here. You got a couple different center drills. Um, there is one chamfer tool just to kind of give you a starting point. Um, so what you guys can actually do in here is you can add a new group, which is going to create a folder. And then we can actually add uh, tools into that folder. So let's just say our new group is, we'll just say night class. So now we just added a new group. Now what I'm going to do is add a tool into that group. So there's two ways of going about it inside of here. Um, first thing we can do is uh, this came out in I think 2014 um, where you can actually just stack it. And how it works with the form tools is you start with the bottom and you work your way up. So let's say we want to use a radius tool on you know this radius over here and this radius over here. So what we'll do is we'll start off with our radius tool and it will show it in there. And then let's get a shank in there. So we'll get our shank. So what I like to do is I kind of like to get everything um, built. So it kind of looks something like our tool and then go back through and make your modifications on the sizes itself. So for this one, um, let's say our um, bottom diameter is 0.25. And we have a uh, sweep in there and it's a quarter inch radius. Now, a lot of these are going to auto calculate and you'll actually get a checkbox on the ones that will auto calculate. Let's say for angles, you know, if you guys um, start and well, I'll get with that later. Um, so some of these will auto calculate for you guys as well. So um, I can say my top diameter instead of being 644, we can just say 0.625. And now I can go to my cylinder, which is my shank. And I'll just say my diameter is 625 to kind of match that. And my, my shank length is going to be 1.96. Uh, we can make that at 2.5. So now I have just created a full radius uh, tool in here to cut this. Now, like I said, you can, you know, each radius tool is different. As we all know, um, you know, not all the radius tools are always the same. So um, we can uh, go in here and modify it all as well. Now there's another place we can go change this um, inside of the actual project Excel itself. So let's say 0.25 radius 
tool. And then we can just save and exit. So now is how do I get that shape into my tool library? So what we'll do here is we're gonna add a profile operation. Now, when you guys grab your geometry, grab the bottom. And that is where the, oops, uh, let me delete that. That is where the bottom diameter of that radius is going to be touching against. Let me turn off my tangent. So we got a chain there. And we'll go ahead and get this side as well. Okay. Now, comes to the tool side of things. First thing you want to do is add a new tool and call it an end mill. Now, uh, you guys can call it different um, tools as well. Um, this one is pretty close matching what we're going to go for. Um, there is some custom drilling tools. Those that you guys know, uh, Sydney, um, he's been preaching to me before I even started working here, and he's a shape tools always use an end mill. No matter what, I want to see an end mill on there. Don't use anything else, just use an end mill. Um, you guys can definitely use whatever tool um, that you guys want, as long as it fits along the lines. But it seems to me that the end mill always works the best um, on, on calculation and simulations and getting that all set. So what I'm going to want to do now is my diameter of my end mill is going to be the smallest portion of that shape tool that we're going to be cutting with. So if you guys remember when we created that radius tool, we did the lower portion of that circle at quarter inch and the upper portion and the shank at three eighths of an inch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this right at um, quarter inch here. And I don't care about shoulder. I don't care about arbor. I don't, uh, none of this really matters to me except for the cutting length. And then you can also you specify the flutes. Yeah. Uh, you're going to want to leave that at a eighth inch diameter. Did I say that's the uh, minor diameter? Yeah, you said quarter inch, but your custom tool definition that you oh, set up sorry. was an eighth inch on that lower diameter. My bad. There we go. So on Greg's, it, paying, Greg's paying closer attention than I am. <laughs> <laughs> and a good way to check that now. And thanks for catching that, Greg is now so we have our end mill um and our quarter inch end mill now if i go over to the shape tab i can go to my night class and grab my tool now you'll see everything pops up and if i have any questions or man i can't remember what i did for that tip diameter uh get old like me and forget um you can come in here click the edit button and we can do it right here. So exactly what Greg said, it's eighth inch, not quarter inch. So <laughs> thank you for that, Greg. Um, with a five eighths inch uh, diameter. So you can always come in here and you guys can modify these right on the fly as well. So let's say, you know, that quarter inch uh, radius tool, um, you order a second one, you got it from a different vendor and maybe our top diameter is no longer 625 and maybe it's a half inch now. So you guys can come in here and modify these as well right on the fly. So now we have our, um, our cutter completely applied right here. Now I don't want to go forward and say, all right, now let's run with this tool because you'll see the entire length of my tool is yellow which is meaning that the entire length of my tool is considered a cutting surface. Um, that's not where we want to go. So if I go back to my sh edit shape here, and if I look at my height, um, and where am I? Be that 250, the sweep of the radius. Sweep, okay. So now if I go to my topology and do a cutting length of 0.250 yeah of course because it's a quarter inch radius now you'll see that only the cutting area is highlighted in yellow and the reason we want to do that is more or less just for the solid verify 
um, and the host CAD to show us if we are, let's say our entire holder here is going along and maybe we're shanking out. And since it's all yellow, it's not gonna alarm out saying that uh, we're, we have a collision. Um, so we wanna get that uh, as close as possible for you guys somewhat within the realm um you know we can extend this you know sometimes you got the cutting flutes that go up just a little bit higher so you know we could do like a, a 0.3 and get it up just a little bit more but now it should match exactly of what's going on in here and it's pulling the height and the the diameter all off of that shape tool itself so the only thing we really care about is right here at that tip diameter so now um, we got the easy part, just programming it. So we'll just tell it that we want to go down to that depth and we can just do save and calculate. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend my tool path just a hair so we're not coming right down on the material. So we'll do 0 0.25, 0 0.25, apply it all. Give us a little bit extra going in there. Save and calculate. And now in solid verify, can't get this panned around for you guys for the best view. You'll see our radius cutter coming in there, arcing in, and we got a nice beautiful radius going all the way through. Um, now, of course, you guys can take this in, you know, multiple cuts or you know step overs using clear offset if you can't if it can't take that much material at a time that's just all based off of inside of the um the technology portion so if we want to do a step down right here we could step it down each pass um, or if we needed to step over and move its weight into it um, that's the best way to get in there and i see eric is here it's about time you show up eric no, i'm just kidding Okay, so I'm going to play that through one more time and just get a sanity check to make sure I am right up on size. So I can zoom in here. So you'll see that we're green going all the way through. Um, the green yellow is kind of what I'm looking for uh, just because I have four tenths accuracy set on my stock target, but I'm running a accuracy. Oh, basically the same right here as well. So as long as I see that green or yellow color in there, I'm happy. <laughs> no, that's okay, great, all right, Eric. Okay, so now, um, actually this is actually one of Eric's uh, tools that he was requesting. So what we're gonna do is kind of a custom uh, stacked cutter, um, I'm, I'm not even sure what to call it, but um, kind of like a keyway cutter, but with a full angles. So once again, what we'll do is we'll go to our tool library and do shape tools. And we'll just add a new tool here. And we'll start here, here, and we'll put a shank on there. Now let's see our bottom diameter is definitely not going to be that big let's just say one one inch now i'm going to have it auto calculate my my top diameter based off of my angle and i can also set my height so we can say let's say quarter inch now let's just go a little bit bigger uh 375 So we got a um, bottom diameter. I want to change this up to zero. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is have my bottom diameter be auto calculated, and my top diameter is man. What did I, do? What did I set that to? Um, one inch. So my top diameter is going to be 1.0 and my height was 375. 
So I'll put my 375 in here. Ah, hang on. I want to auto calculate. Yeah, the top, the bottom. That looks right. Yep. Now, get my shank in here. So we have a shank diameter of half inch. Oops. Uh, and let's do a height of three inches. Now, <laughs> I got a yay. Is that is that kind of what you you were looking for, Eric? On that one cutter. Kind of like a um, a single point thread mill. Looks like my back chamfer just times ten. Okay, <laughs> I can make it smaller too, <laughs> but we'll, we'll go. Uh, okay. So. Yeah, Kevin's uh, gonna be chamfering manhole covers. Yeah. Nice night class. <laughs> Let's do um, um we'll, we'll we'll shrink her in half for you. And so we did point five, we go to cone two, top diameter point five. And this can be yeah. We're good. Okay. So now I'm gonna say Eric. Okay, so now we can do a save and exit. <laughs> okay, so now uh, we're gonna go that same route. Um, like I said before, so what we'll do is add a new milling operation. We'll do profile. Our geometry. And I'll grab this side, hit the green check mark, grab this side over here, green check mark. And now we're gonna grab a new end mill. And Greg, was it 375? No, uh, no, I wasn't paying attention this time. 0.5. I was leaving that one for Tim. <laughs> I was going to say half. I was going to say half inches if I remember it, but I don't know if that was the top or the bottom diameter. Sorry, guys. I had a traumatic, uh, traumatic brain injury and I broke my ankle on uh, on uh, Saturday, so I'll just blame it on that. <laughs> don't don't flip your four wheeler on top of you. Okay. Oh, so now we'll go to um, my night class and Eric Moon. And there we go, we got our, our tool there. So now let's go ahead and shrink up our cutting length. So let's see, 0.5, and let's go 0.75. There we go. So now I have my tool. Like I said, it's all based off of this diameter right here. And like I said, if you always need to, to double check, um, we can always just click on the edit shape and click the edit button. And I can see the bottom diameter is half inch as well. Okay. And so we got it all shrunk Ooh. up. Woohoo. Craig and I, Craig and I are one to one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now it's a ball game. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> now, I, I personally like having this window open over here so I can kind of see the changes being updated automatically. Um, completely up to you guys. If you guys don't like seeing that there, you can turn it off right here. Um, I'm not sure if all you guys knew about that or not. Um, as well as this button with the visual check, I can have my mouse cursor over and it should show up. I may have to be in the uh, library. So once I select this here, I just saw it. Come on, where to go? It should be popping up for me. I see it there for a second. You got it over here. Come on. Oh, there. It was there. Eric, it doesn't like your your fancy tools. Maybe it's because it's the manhole cover tool. <laughs> okay. 
So now um, what we want to do is we're going to run that chamfer uh, going all the way around. So our levels um, were already set up. Um, let's extend it off uh, kind of like what we did before. So let's do um, half inch, half inch, do apply all, save and calculate. Oops, I mean to G-code it, simulate, solid verify. And now we can see that tool coming in there, buzzing off and buzzing off doing art. Now let's just make sure we're up to size and everything matches. We got yellow, so we're, we're right on cue on that side. Check it over here. We're right on the money right there as well. Where, Tim, where is Ronnie Kidder? I just talked to him yesterday, I think it was. I know. He needs to be watching this because there's a, there's a shortcut in here. Okay, is the bottom of that tool with the bottom of the cut? Does it extend below? Um, no. So it is set up at the bottom of that cut. So what you can, um, so it's gonna be a right on size, and a great point um, there, Eric. So we may have with that tool there, let me just do a simulate here again, solid verify, and let me do a side view. So you can see we are right on size now, uh, two ways of going about this. We can cheat it down by line and putting a negative delta of 10 thou in, and let's just do that. So we can go to our levels and let's say, I wanna shift that down minus 0 0.025. Now, when I shift that down 25, save and calculate, simulate, we're gonna be actually gouging our part. But to accommodate that, so you can see we're in red, we're gouging, is what we can do is we can shift that over as well. So if we go to geometry and I can do offset of 0.25, apply all, save and calculate, simulate, and let me get you a good view here. Oops. So now you can see that we're going past, so we're not gonna get that little line there like you're look, oops, looking for there and go across as well. So that's one way to go about it. Now, another way is let's kind of put this back at, and I haven't done this test this, so um, let's just go to there, we'll go to geometry, we'll put a zero, apply all, and what we can do is now do a chamfer and we can tell it what cutting diameter we want it to work on. Um, so we were doing, um, a, what size was it? 375, uh, half inch. So if we go to technology and let's just try 0.75. Tool type is incorrect. Okay, so let's try this. Oops. Because we always like when the software can figure out stuff. Let's go to a spot drill here. And what we'll do is call this um, half inch, 0.5. And we'll do shape, Eric's tool. And I need to switch up my cutting length here. What am I missing here? We may not be able to do this here. I'm just trying to think because the angle is automatic, automatically calculated. Let me try something here. So if we have that checked, let's try doing five. Tool, select, add. Well, I should be able to. Half inch 
Moment mehr. So what do you do a chamfer with an endmill? Yeah, uh, well, under a no, profile a using the endmill. Yeah, using that chamfer style, and I think it's because we have two different. Uh, yeah, it's going to be closer in definition to a tapered endmill. So let's try that. Add tapered, and we we'll go tip diameter is going to be 0 0.5. 0 0.75. And now, if we go to our shape, the Eric Moon special, and that's good enough for right now. Just to check it. So technology, let's see what she looks like here. And I gotta play that one more time here. So what we can do, Eric, is increase that diameter to something a little bit more. So we can do is, let's do 0.7, simulate. So it's using more towards the top end. So I'll verify, get my view here. Now I got too much in there, go figure. Yeah, use like 525, because that should simulate the 25. Yeah, you're right. That you were doing before. Yeah. Greg, got had me on that one. Dang it. <laughs> Two one. Okay, so let me zoom in here, and so now you can see Eric that we are not cutting right on the edge there and we're not cutting on the edge there as well and that's going to automatically do the calculation so you don't have to do a minus in your delta and you don't have to do a shift over on your your working offset so does that kind of make is does that uh kind of what you're looking for there eric holy cow came back with a book here <laughs> Yeah, I'll let you read using, that. I've been using chamfer okay with the taper tool. It's the back chamfer that's been. So Eric, are you talking like if you were chamfering underneath the part and using the top side of this? Yep. That is where you're going to want to use the HSS for the undercut. And if I think if I remember right for our last week's part, we had one set up just like this. Zach's looking for that same thing back backside chamfering. Okay. So let's uh let's do that real quick. And what we'll do is so first thing I want to do is edit the part and we will do a chamfer and Definitely not that big. Let's say a ten thou. Something kind of like a de, uh, deburring. Is that correct? What you use it for, Eric and Zach? Okay, exactly. Okay. So I just need just a, that little surface area, kind of like what we talked about last week, using the HSS for uh, the undercuts. So now. Go to my HSS here, add milling, HSS, and we will do parallel to curve. My geometry is that little angle there. And now our edge curve, we'll call that. And we are going to tell it to determine by number of cuts. 
grab that tool. Levels, and let's go in here. Now, the biggest thing that we are gonna be playing with is the tool control with this damp. So now let's do a save and calculate. And let's see where we're at here. Oh, yeah, I know it's crashing down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's using more of the bottom right now. So if I shift that down, uh, height of my tool is Gregor Tim. Um, 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 375. Okay, so let's go to... To the center of that angle. Minus, so we do like 400. Okay. Hmm. Uh, let me fix this lead in, lead off here. Uh, link, use lead in, use lead out. Relax, Kevin. Eric says he's done the same thing to his part. <laughs> Darn it. Didn't let it go far enough. Okay, so let's uh, get that. Uh, 150. Holy moly, what do we got going on here? Okay, so now we are definitely uh, going way deep. So now what I'm going to do is turn on my gouge check, check against my drive, and we will do trim and relink. I got nothing. And let's do check surfaces. Tell it to do all adjacent surfaces. Didn't you lie to it about the diameter that we're using? Yeah, but we should be able to shift right here. Ah, uh, yeah. So we're telling it to go down, but it's cutting. Um, so if we go center, let's go user defined, and I can shift out. Man, I forget my uh, shape tool numbers. Five, five. Yeah, let me turn off my gouge check. Simulate, solid verify. What in the world? I can do a minus. Tool access control. See, Eric is just loving this right now. Ronnie's here to help. Did Ronnie finally show up? Yeah, Ronnie showed up. <laughs> Split the gouge for minus one for, for check one. There one we for go. design. Ooh. So now we got it. Um, just need to extend it out a little bit. Um, so now let's go to gouge and I'll do enable, save and calculate, looks good. And let's go to my extend trim, start, let's see. 100, 
end as a hundred. Oh, it looks like I need to extend out even more. Not that much. Now, once, <laughs> one, the nice thing, and Eric, this is definitely one thing I suggest as well, um, since you kind of do this stuff on a daily basis, is once you have it set up. So now um, I got my, my deburring set up just the way that I'm looking for here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to save that out as my template. And I will say, oops, bottom Debur Eric M tool. So now when I come back to that, I don't have to worry about all these parameters that I changed. Um, I don't have to worry about checking anything. Everything is saved for me. And then I can just pull it in and just grab that drive as well. So does that, does that help out Eric and uh, Zach? If not, definitely let me know. Yes, but I don't think I have HSS license. Eric? Shoot me an email and I'll get you hooked up with HSS license. Ronnie. Ronnie, I'm glad you showed up because I got something cool to show you tonight. That just for you. Okay. And Zach, are you are you does that help out? Um does that Yes, mostly. Okay. Is there okay? Is there anything that that I can help out? Zach, did you see the HSS undercuts from uh, last week's? Okay. Tell you what, Zach. Uh, go ahead and check that out. Um, any questions that come up along the way, shoot me an email. Um, if uh, that one doesn't cover 100%. I want to make sure you're 100% good um, with that under chamfer uh, tool. So uh, let me know. Okay, perfect. Okay. And then Eric, uh, shoot me an email about your HSS. And Kevin, Kevin, quick question for you. So constant Z can't do undercut? Uh, it can. Constant Z and uh, can do undercuts. Here is the big problem though, is what is set up is with constant Z. What do you um, yeah. Let me just start a new one here. And it's great to bring up because we do have a lot of people that just have the linear and constant Z. So let's just go to constant Z. The biggest thing that is missing over here is I don't have the determined by number of cuts anymore. So I can't just tell it to do it. one single pass. What it's going to want to do is it's going to want to take and work on that outside diameter, the outer most largest diameter, and do like a surfacing tool path. Where on these, we just want to do a single deburr going around or drop through the center of a yep. hole and do a deburr. So great question, though. Yep. yep. Now, while not ideal, would you be able to adjust your tool path parameters where you can put a large step over in yes. that's greater than the surface area? Yes, you can. Um, but here's the thing is we are at that point, we're using a wrench to pound in a finishing nail. Um, we want you to guys have the, the right tools for the right job. And then what I mean by that is I don't want you guys getting frustrated of, well, I, I have to sit there and constantly play with my step over to get this to work. So if we get you guys H full HSS at that point, then we, we don't have to worry about that. We can do a parallel to curve or another good one um, that works well on something like this is morph between boundary curves because it is going to be looking at the upper line and the lower line. And we're telling it to 
uh, do a single line cut through there. So, okay. So now let's go ahead and let's pretend that we had um, a tool manufacturer sent me a tool and it's a custom tool. And what it's gonna do is that we're gonna do this, uh, this drill counter bore combined tool. Um, the manufacturer sent me the drill or the, uh, the, sh um, the tool itself. And so I wanna take that and copy that in. So what I can do now is, let me just hit control tab. Here is my, my custom drill that was sent to me from the, the grind shop. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over to my sketch here and I'm just gonna hit control C. I'm gonna copy that sketch. And now if I go back to my other part here, now what I'm gonna do is tools, solid cam, and we're gonna go to our shape tools. And we're gonna add in, add. And now, Obviously, I want to get all the parameters from that tool. So what I can do is instead of having to build it all up here and looking at the prints and all that stuff, I can actually click the import button. And I can come in here and custom draw whatever I want. So what I mean by that is what it will do is it will close temporary close out of your solid cam project open up a secondary just sketch for you guys and you guys can actually draw in those tools. Now, every one of you guys will see this tool drawn in here and this is drawn in for as an example. So you always want your tool um, facing, you know, the tip to the, the left and the shank off to the right. So, and you can see I got that tool in here, but what I can do is um, I like to kind of keep everything in one sketch. So I'm gonna do edit sketch, and then I can just click anywhere in here and can hit control V and it brings in my tool. Now my tool is flipped around, which is fine. Um, we can go to my uh, move entities and we can do a rotate and I can just move the screen out of the way for right now. And we can do a rotate around that point. think yeah 90, 90 degrees so there we go now what I can do is highlight that all again and go to my mirror oops mirror about that line oh ding I wasn't supposed to hit copy undo to mirror, uncheck the copy, flip it over. Mirror, mirror bolt line. Yep. There we go. Okay, so now we got um, my, my custom tool drawn in there. We're good to go. It doesn't have to be down on the center line or anything like that. Now, one thing um, that gets people every once in a while is as you're sketching in here, all right, now I got my tool, I can define my chain. Make sure you exit out of the sketch. Um, it will pop up with a filter and you won't be able to select your line. So now what I can do is define chain. And I always like to start right at the tip and work my way around. So now I can come here and I'll just do constant Z. And we have our entire loop going all the way around. And basically what happens is it does it revolve around that tool. So we can do finish. going to open up our part file again and it's going to have all the parameters that I specified in there um, so it's real nice real easy um, and see if we need to make any modifications or rev changes I can just come in here and make the changes on your maybe your cone one or uh, cylinder um, you know I can come in here see my diameters uh, I got 530 so um, you can come and make those changes at any one point in time. And I'm going to name this as Ronnie. 
this tool. All right. And what's nice about using the SolidWorks sketches is that you have access to more complex geometry. So within the Solid Cam shape tools definition, you see a lot of basic shapes that you can build off of. But if for some reason your geometry doesn't match those basic shapes, maybe you need some arcs or maybe a spline would better suit the profile of your tool, you can definitely use a SolidWorks sketch to define that tool out and create custom, um, complex uh, revolution uh, tools um, for those shapes. Yeah, because uh, when it comes to custom grinding these tools, <laughs> we all know the sky's the limit on what they can do out there. So. Yeah, it's a great point. Is whatever you can draw, it's going to uh, revolve it for you guys. Now, here is one downfall of the shape tools, um, and this is actually going to be added in shortly. But um, brooches, since the shape tools come in as a revolve, if you guys have a custom two-step brooch, that is not going to work. Um, so that we are. I should say we uh, solid cam development is currently working on that to be able to add custom broaching or square tooling for you guys uh, to accommodate those uh, two step broaches or multiple step broaches as well. So, all right, Tim, remember that uh, 0.53? We can do a save and exit. And now what I can do is come in here and we'll just do a drilling op. And grab that. And like I said, I still, um, I don't know, maybe it's just because I Sydney pounded it in my brain, always use an end mill for shape tool. So I'm still going to use an end mill. Um, our diameter is going to be our 0.53. And then now I can See, come you in. You told me, but that, that locked in your brain. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> that worked. The brain cells are starting to fire a little bit better after the four-wheeler crash. <laughs> All right, so now we grab Ronnie's custom tool here. And now, if you look at it, that is great and all, but I forgot to add my my basic shank on there. Um, so I really have nothing to grab onto the tool. Um, actually, I did that on accident. So what I'm gonna do is come in here We'll go to cylinder three, add that shank on there. Um, let's just do a half inch shank and something to hang on to, yeah, that will work. So there we go. So now it looks like somewhat of a normal tool um, now that we have something to grip on with the collet and the holder. So we can hit the green check mark here. Now I can go to my levels. Tell it to drill down to this depth here. And technology, I want to peck it. Point two five. No, point one here. Save and calculate. Now, this is one thing I like about it is in my solid verify since it shows everything i can see exactly what's going on ah but i didn't get my my relief cut for my socket head cap screw so what i'm gonna do is my socket head cap screw is half inch deep and uh, for those of you guys that are unsure how to do that um, you guys don't have to use the evaluate button if you guys just highlight the surface by holding control key it will actually give you the distance down here so now what i can do with my levels is do a delta of minus half inch save and calculate simulate solid verify And there we go. So it's exactly what we're looking for. We got um, a custom drill counterbore tool all in one, doing it all in one operation for you guys. Um, I know this isn't very common um, anymore, but I know there is some companies out there that still use this kind of tooling. 
um, and kind of getting off the subject here, but you know, if um, different way to go about it is to drill it and do a, you know, a, a end mill and do a circular interpolation as well. So it um, seems to be with the price point of a custom ground tool versus running two tools, a little bit cheaper to, to run the two tools, but completely up to you guys and whatever tool you guys have in your shop. Holy cow, it's almost nine o'clock. Jeepers, I gotta go on. Okay, so now we got this crazy looking port tool here. Um, you know, th there's so much going on here. I, holy cow, to, to draw that up um, or even go off of a br blueprint, um, it, it, not fun. So what we can do is, but there's more. We can go and find where we did that revolve, this one, yep. So we can come over here and kind of do the same thing as what we talked about before. So what I'm gonna do is highlight that. I'm gonna do control C. Now, if I right click on this, you will, you'll see there is no uh, copy or paste or anything like that. So use your sh uh, keyboard shortcut keys. Um, and this is just Windows. Um, you don't have to have SolidWorks shortcut keys set up for this. Just hit control C. And now if we go back to our solid cam, tools, solid cam, and go to our tool library, shape tools. And we will add a new tool here, and I will do an import as well. And we'll open up our sketch, and we'll just do a edit sketch. Just kind of get this out of the way. Control V, and let's go ahead and rotate so we're all in line, center of rotation point. It's going to be here, 90. Green check mark. And what I'm talking about is now if I go to define chain, I I see how it has a filter on there. I cannot click on anything. Um, I can't get through. And we do get this call every once in a while. Of, I, I just created a custom tool, but I can't click anything. Um, all you guys have to do, like I said, is just exit out of the out of the sketch. So now if we do define chain. And let's do constant Z. Green check mark. Finish. And now you'll see it broke up everything for us right here. Um, now we can keep adding to this, like what we did or what I forgot before. So I'll go to cylinder three. We can add a shank on there, um, diameter of 0.75, something to grip on. And we'll call this shape. Oops. Uh, tool. Save and exit. Add milling. And then we'll just do like what we did before, do a drilling. Grab that. Is there a point, tool, select, and now we can go ahead and build that. What you got, Greg? Now, Ronnie's got a uh, good observation here, is you kind of have that sketch as a revolve from the get-go, um, but Ronnie was talking about if you don't have that sketch to automatically copy, mm -hmm. um, what you can do is place an axis on the center of that revolve geometry, uh, create a plane and do an intersection curve to extract that profile. Sure. If you don't have access to a revolt sketch. Yeah. And that can be substituted as your shape tool profile. Yeah, that's a great point. And he's saying it's uh, also if you get in an imported model, he used an IGES file as a example. So if you get a dumb solid in and you need to get that geometry, you can do a plane that bisects it through the axis of revolution and then do the intersection curve to extract it. Um, 
that sounds a little bit complicated. Does everybody understand what uh, Greg's saying there? Ronnie gets yep. it. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay. Now, if you guys don't get it, um, you don't want to speak up. That's fine. Um, shoot me an email, and I can walk you through that process as well. I'll show you now, but. Um, Tim's yelling, he's Skyping me saying, hurry up, hurry up, I got to get to bed. Just kidding. <laughs> That's what that was. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now, oh, shoot. Uh, one last thing here is I forgot to set up my cutting length. And um, now we can just take a shot in the dark. So we can just say two inches. Um, 1.75. We just want to get something pretty close, 1.5. So we just want to get something pretty close that's going to represent um, what's going on for our, our tool here. So now with the green check mark, levels are set up good. Uh, drill cycle, want to peck it. And thou, hit OK. Save and calculate. Simulate. Solid verify. And now everything should be right up to size. So actually, looks like I need to go a little bit deeper on my um, my counterbore so I can come back and and modify that as well. But um, looks like we're all good. And so there, I, I try to kind of go through all the different um, ways of going about the shape tools. And I, sorry, Ryan, I forgot about that other way too as well. Um, if you don't have a revolve, but um, that's kind of the ins and outs of, you know, there's multiple different ways to create a shape tool, multiple different ways to import in tools, um, different ways to copy tools over and bring them in as well. Um, so the, the, they've, they've tried to make this as easy as possible. Um, like I said, the one thing just to remember is go off of one is the smallest diameter, um, two is use that end mill. Um, when you're picking that new tool. So, and, you know, like this one, we could have used a drill, but use that, um, <clears throat> and a drill would, would work just fine as well. But um, it's, it's nice to kind of keep everything the same, you know, so when, you know, Ronnie goes to program, um, he knows that no matter what, he's just gonna grab end mill. He can type in the, the smallest size in there, bing, bang, boom, we have our holder. Um, one way also is if I just open up my, tool library, the only way you guys can tell, let's say you have a huge list of tools in here. Let's, we got you know two through 200 tools in here. Um, the one thing that shows you guys, taking a quick glance over here of what a shape tool is, is there's a little icon with a little uh, half moon shape right here. And that's what's gonna give away that it is a shape tool as well. So. Um, just want to let you guys know about that. So if you guys have a huge list and whatnot, um, you can specify that. And obviously, I didn't put any descriptions in here, um, but that's another great way of of doing it as well. But if you guys are kind of overlooking um, stuff, you know, the huge library, um, that little tiny shape right there is giving away that it is a uh, full out shape tool for you guys. How does that sound, guys? Did you did you learn something new? I did. <laughs> I learned I need to start taking <laughs> that uh, one vitamin where I can get better memory. <laughs> but huh? but in in all good things, I only broke uh, what they say four bones. So, so the X-ray person, so <sighs> we're good. <laughs> so if you guys see me at I am fun time at I am. Yeah, if you guys see me at IMTS and I'm limping a little bit, that's probably why. <laughs> All right. Now, um, cool. good, so getting some feedback. feedback. Awesome, guys. Um, okay, so what I'm going to throw out to you guys is uh, next week, um, we have one of our customers that just wants to pretty much see a part start to finish without even me opening it first and viewing it. 
um, and testing it and stuff like that. So that's next week. What I want to throw out to you guys is um, we don't have anything planned the week after that, but um, we are partnered kind of like what Ronnie did with um, Eureka software. Would you guys be interested in seeing the Octopus software, which is all to do with robotics, um, using a robotic arm to do five axis trimming, uh, using a robotic arm to load and unload conveyors, um, using a robotic arm to deburr parts. Is there any interest in that? Okay, I got a sure. Yes, okay. So what I'll do guys is I'll, uh, I'll try to get that set up. Um, personally, I was on site with a customer. Um, they are running, oh, about 35 to 45 robotics in the cell uh, or in their shop, um, multiple different cells. Um, and I seen that, uh, um, octopus software and i was blown away so it's really cool to watch even though if you guys don't have robotic robots in your shop um or maybe thinking about in the near future the integration that they make from solidworks to solid cam to octopus is pretty sweet stuff so um just want to throw that out there and looks like uh pretty much everybody said they want to see it so i'll try to get that lined up for you guys as well so but with that being said, sorry for going late, apologize, um, but thank you for uh, staying with us and uh, hopefully you got something out of the class tonight on how to do it. Uh, any questions or concerns that come up with this or anything at all, please shoot me an email um, and let me know what we can do to help you guys out. Um, that's what we're here for. Um, and uh, just wanna get you guys the, the best, like I said before, the best uh, support experience you guys can have. So anything else, Tim? Great, great job, great job, Kevin. Uh, appreciate the class. It was uh, well done. Got a lot of good, uh, good uh, tips and tricks along the way with this. As uh, you know, uh, I was going to point out the idea of of going to get that exit sketch, um, but then you came back into it on the on, on the port tool, and, and oh sure, yep. that was uh, that was a good uh, um, supporting um, you know example of it. So that's great. So Greg, appreciate you uh, participating too as well, and customers in. Hey, thanks for your time and um, keep the keep the feedback coming and looking forward to uh, seeing some of you guys at IMTS. So uh, stop by and see us. Yeah, absolutely, guys. And uh, if I don't talk to you guys in the meantime, have a great uh, rest of your week and we will talk to you guys next Tuesday night. All right, guys. Have a great night. Bye bye.